Are you wondering how you can create a pivot table in Smartsheet? Well, if that's the case, then you've come to the right place because today I'm gonna to be showing you exactly how you can do this. Now, what I've done here is I've just created a brand new workspace and I've called it the title of this video. And I've created three different um, sheets just to show you how I'm gonna be doing this and what you can do in your own account and on your own Smartsheet um, plan. So. What I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with the data sheet. And you probably already know that in Smartsheet you don't have tabs. So that's one of the reasons why we've got three different sheets back in my workspace. And we'll get through that in, in due course. But what I've done here is I've just entered in some, some basic dummy data. Um, let's assume I'm a car dealer and these are all the different cars that I have. Um, so, we've you know, some of this is going to, you know, it's not really going to make sense. I mean, if you look at the bottom one, I've never seen a, t a red Toyota I go uh, at £50,000, um, especially if I'm a used car dealership. So, you know, just take this data uh, with a pinch of salt. But what we want to basically do is let, let's assume you've got your data set and you want to create some pivot tables from it. Well, in my experience, the easiest way to do this is in a separate sheet. Now, you could do it in, in the same data sheet, but I find it can get a little bit overwhelming and a little bit confusing. So what I like to do is I'd like I like to set up a bridge sheet or a calculation sheet, uh, you can call it as well. And I'm going to go back into that. So if I if I go back into my if I go browse, I'm going back into that workspace. And I've created all of this ahead of time, just to save us. Yeah, as I say, a little bit of time. Um, but uh, and I'll, but I'll walk you through each of it and how I got to it. So. That will kind of explain how you can do this in real time. So I'm going to be leveraging these different formulas here to create our pivot tables. Now, I've got, as you can see, I've got one, two, I've got four different pivot tables here, four different pivot, pivot table types. The first one is I've called it the sum of mileage by make. And as the name suggests, I want to, to, to know, you know, how much mileage of all of the different um, makes of cars that I own and what does it come to? Um, you know, you can analyze the data in any way you want, but this is something I want to look at. So what I've done here is I've, what I like to do and what I'd recommend doing is using the formatting, so the, the back, background color, just to differentiate any titles and totals. So all, that's all I did there is I just kind of, in that cell, I just kind of selected a color. Um, I've given this a title, and then I've manually typed in the different, um, makes and I've done that by one thing I'll quickly just do what I did is I've opened this in a new tab so that when I'm doing this I can that's one of the benefits of Smartsheet you can kind of um, go in between the tabs you know so this is this is what I did I essentially listed these all here copied them from here and then the key to this pivot table is the formula sum if so I've set this all up already so what I'm saying here is please can you sum um, the make Ford, and you can find that in, in the at row. Um, and I've got another video on the at row f um, functionality on my, on my channel. So if you want to learn about that, then you can, you can check that out. Um, but yeah, if, if the, if the make of the car is Ford, please, can you sum the mileage? And it's done that and it's given us, oh, I've done my mistake. And it's given us 40,000. So then if I headed back into my data sheet, I can just confirm that's correct. So we're looking at Ford, um, Ford only, and we want to look at the mileage. So the quickest way to, to check would be to, you know, highlight all of that. And in the bottom corner, we can see some 40,000. So correct, that, that's, that, that formula works. Now, because I've used the at row, um, the at row uh, functionality, I can drag this down so all I did here, let's take this out, is I've bottom right corner, dragged it down, and it's populated for all of the different makes. Now to get the total, I've just done an equal sum and selected all of these different rows here from row three down to six. Now one thing I haven't mentioned at this point is to make this calculation, I've had to use a cross sheet formula. So if I was just to create this quickly for you, just to show you how it works and how you're going to likely need to do this on your own account. So equal sum if, open brackets, I've referenced another sheet. So if I click that, now if I want to make that reference, left click make, so data sheet range, and I've typed that in, so I've put that in uh, little quote marks there. So data sheet range, make, 
insert reference, I've pressed that. Then I've pressed primary column. So then I've selected this cell and then I've gone back into here and I've selected the mileage column, put in the, the you know, the reference name and pressed update reference, hit, hit enter. And that's given us this. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's essentially how the formula's made. Um, it, it might look a little bit tricky on screen, but you know, you can always go look for kind of Google Smartsheet function list and look for sum if, and you can see how they recommend building this formula um, if you're struggling with that. But you know, on screen here, if you wanna have a quick look, this is, uh, you know, this is the first part, obviously. The, the, sorry, this is the range. There you go, that's what I was looking for. This is the range, this is the criterion, and this is the sum range. Okay, that's pivot table one. Pivot table one is done. Next, I wanted to look at the worth by the make. So using exactly the same concept, all I've done this time is we've, again, we've used the, the, the range I created before, the make, which is forward, selected the criterion, sorry, that's the forward, and then the, de the, the data sheet range, which you'll see here, I haven't actually titled or given a name. If I click here, uh, this would have been um, the price, I believe. I selected this as price. So if I, let me just, work, let me wipe this out. You know what, let's let's do this from, from scratch and we'll show how it works. Sum if, so just remember when you're doing this, you basically if you're, you have to create the pivot tables manually in Smartsheet, you know, this is something you're gonna need to, to set up. So select this column, insert reference. You're gonna need to set it, set it up, but if, you know, once you've done it once, you know, this will continue populating so long as you continue updating the data sheet. So that is one of the benefits is, you know, is a one-time thing you need to do. So to get the worth by make, we need to select price. And I didn't give this a name, so I'm gonna do this now in real time so you can see what I did there. You don't have to add these little uh, things, but I do, because I find it easier to differentiate. So I've got this, this is the column, insert reference, enter, excellent, $14,000. Drag it all the way down, and you'll see, again, we've got a total here of, what's that, 100 and, 172,697. We could add another total if we wanted. Uh, yeah, let's just do that, why not? So what I did there, selected those cells, Control C, down here, Control V. Now, one thing you wanna do on any value is hit this little uh, currency format button. Uh, obviously put it in whatever you want. Um, we're gonna go dollars for the purpose of this demo. There we go, that's the next one. So we've got two sum ifs. What if you wanted to do a count? So in this third pivot table, um, what I've done here, and, and you'll see actually, I don't, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this so far, I've indented. So when I created this pivot table, I've, I've, I've given it a title, done the formatting, and then everything underneath I've, I've manually typed and listed. And then I've used the, the indent to put it underneath. So then if we were to do this, um, I need to indent this. Then you can see that it's it conceals it. So that's visually fantastic. You don't have to do that. I, I like it. I think it works really well. It's, it's actually how a pivot table looks. Um, but that's one of the one of the perks of, of doing the indenting as well as you can hide it. And that's great if you've got a big calculation sheet or pivot table sheet. Um, you know, it's another just little tip there. Anyway, what I've done here, entered all of the different colors. I've indented them out. So let's just whack them out. So that's essentially how it would have been. Use the indent. We've got this here. This formula is a count, a count if. So what I'm doing here, count if the color found in, in the range color. So count the color if it's green, for instance, or black or red. So this is just saying, you know, all the different cars that I own as a dealer, this is how many we've got. So that's another example. You can use the count if formula. Now the bottom one, I just want to quickly show you this because this is almost a pivot table, if you can imagine in Excel, where you've got, you know, you, you've got kind of like a two axis going on. So here I'm looking at the color by the, by the, by the make, not, well, not just that, sorry. I've got the color by the make and then the model as well. So I've got three different independent variables going on here. Now what I did, again, I started just by creating the, the, the outline or the shell. So I've put in car analysis, 
there's just the title of this pivot table. I've put typed in uh, color here, put in just the gray, and I've just listed out the colors here. And then on the left hand side, I've put forward, I've put in two examples from the data sheet, so Fiesta and Fusion, and I've indented them. Now onto the formulas. If you look here, this is just a sum of what follows underneath because we want to look at, you know, in Ford, we want to look at what we've got um, for colors. So all I did here was equal sum and I've done the references. And then what I did, if I just wipe this out, just give an example, is then bottom right drag. And that's going to automatically map to the rows underneath. Now, when it comes to this particular formula, I've gone for a count if, and this is, or count ifs, I should say, because this is two arguments in this formula. I'm asking if the model is Fiesta and the color is green, can you count it, please? And I've done, and I've only done this once. And the reason why I've only had to do this once is two, well, one symbol that's going to prove invaluable if you're not using it already. And that's the dollar symbol. If you put it before the front of a um, argument, when you drag it down, it's going to keep the, the references. And when it comes to, you know, a number, a particular number cell, you want to put it just before the number. So, so as an example, if I took these out, if I drag this down, it's not going to work. We're going to get a blocked and circular reference. And that's because if you then click into the formula, you'll see it shifted. So what's happened here is this, the reference has shifted from green. It should be green but it's gone down to uh, column two, row 26. So that's not what we want. We want green. So, I mean, you could go in here and manually do this and you could do that and press enter and it would bring it back. But a way around that is if you put in these dollars. So I want to put in dollar here and I want to put in dollar before this number because what I want, I want, what I want this to do is to stay on that cell no matter where I copy the or drag the formula to. And the same for this. The reason why this goes here is because I'm going to be dragging it um, vertically, not horizontally. Bring this down and then I can do this. Look at that the whole way across. And if I go in here, it's going to, if you look, the cell references are mapped automatically. So this little dollar sign is, is invaluable. It saves you so much time. So do learn that. Um, hopefully I've explained that well. If I haven't, drop it down in the link below, uh, in the comments section down below and I'll, I'll get back to questions on that and I can explain it in a future video if needs be. But anyway, you can see now we have this three variabled pivot table. So this is how to create pivot tables really in Smartsheet. I've, 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 you've basically got to set them up manually. But if I go in here and I start making some changes, let's do this. Look, if I add a couple of greens, let's go, you know, the Ford Fusion in red. Or actually, let me change it. We've spray painted it and now it's green. Um, this should update. I need to save it, don't I? For, oh, cancel. I didn't save it. How many greens have you got here? Three. Might need to ref might need to refresh. Get rid of that. Three. There we go. Perfect. So this is updating in real time. Fantastic. So long as the data sheet is updated, your pivot tables are going to update. So as I say, I would recommend getting those in a separate sheet. Now the last thing I'd quickly just like to show you, one of the benefits of using pivot tables is the dashboard. So when it comes to creating a dashboard, I've got a blank dashboard here. I'm just going to add a new chart is if we then reference that pivot table sheet, if we were to select any one of them, so let's go on here. We want to look at this. We can create charts in an instant. And all you then need to do is just play around with the formatting. You can change colors as you like. You can change all the kind of headings, but look, automatically I've got a chart that's just absolutely amazing. I could have a pie instead. So I know that 20% of my, to, um, my cars in my lot are Toyotas, for instance. So you can do this kind of thing and then you can build out a dashboard. And before you know it, you've got this interactive dashboard that, you know, if you let's save this up, um, you know that you can you can start you can really start analyzing your data you can visualize it and you can create these kind of dashboards for for uh, for your stakeholders so there's one final thing that I haven't mentioned yet you might know this already but you might not 
And that is, is actually a pivot app in SmartShape. I'm just going to Google it. It's paid for though, and that's why I haven't discussed it so far. You wanted to know how to create a, a pivot table in SmartSheet. That's how you can do it free of charge. Otherwise, if you have the budget or you can, you can gain it, then you could always get the pivot app. And now this is a paid app and you'll see a, an example of it here um, of what it looks like. It works very similar to Excel. So you obviously specify your rows and columns and your values. Um, but this is this is a paid for application, but you can get it to create pivot pivot tables in Smartsheet if you wanted. So, or just Google pivot app Smartsheet. Uh, it'll be the first link at the top, and then you have to contact um, Smartsheet to discuss it. Um, they will give you a price depending on your solution and how you use Smartsheet. So just bear that in mind. Um, so the price may vary. I'm not sure how much it's going to cost for you if you're an independent user or an organisation. So just do bear that in mind. So that was how to create a pivot table in Smartsheet. I hope this video is useful. If it was, please do hit the like button. That tells me I should continue making videos like this. And do consider subscribing to my channel. If you even head over there, you'll see I've got countless videos on Smartsheet training, which should be of help. So with all of that said, I hope you have an excellent day.